Welcome to another edition of the Insider Mailbag. I'm Jared Johnson, and first I want to say I hope everyone's staying safe out there. But we have a lot of really good questions this week, and we have some good football questions, Red Raider football questions. And I think we're getting close to what we hope is a kickoff of the season. And I, I know I just want to jump out there and say I am more optimistic that there will be a season based on what I've hear, what I've heard, what I've seen uh, here recently than perhaps in the past month. I really believe Texas Tech's going to play. Now, what that's going to look like, whether it be 10 games, 12 games, what have you, I don't know. But I do believe Texas Tech's going to play. And boy, I tell you, let me tell you, I can't wait <laughs> for Riveters to kick off the season. But we have some good questions here about Texas Tech football. The first one comes from Anonymous, who asks, he says, uh, do I have any guys that uh, aren't talked about much that I'm keeping an eye on to be contributors this year? Yeah, absolutely. I want to start in the secondary because I, I think that's a big concern uh, for a lot of people. And here, here's a couple of guys I want to mention. Uh, Jamarcus Ingram, who transferred from Utah State, he came in late last year, uh, broke his hand or his thumb, I'm not sure exactly which, had to wear a cast. He, like, I, I think he got thrown out and played the, the opener without actually practicing at, at safety. He had been practicing at corner. So he can play corner, he can play safety. He knows Coach Patterson what he wants. He knows the, the system. They like him. I think Ingram's going to be a guy they move around uh, and, and they utilize a lot next year. Another guy in really in a very similar role is uh, Adam Beck. He's a guy he can play inside. He played some inside linebacker last year. And he played outside linebacker. Uh, he can play safety, of course, uh, which I think is where he was listed on the spring depth chart as the second string uh, safeties. I think him and Ingram were listed as the second string safeties on the spring depth chart. And I think they could be, your, you know, they could be your starting uh, safeties or uh, one, you know, Ingram can end up playing a lot of corner and, and Beck can end up being a linebacker. So I think these guys, uh, is, we're going to hear a lot of them in, in the fall during the season. I think there's going to be instances where they're moved all over uh, the defense. And I think they can thrive. I think both those guys are playmakers. So I like them a lot. Another defensive back I like a lot is young Alex Hogan, a sophomore uh, out of Houston Lamar. He played some, especially late later in the year last year, fast. Uh, he can be a cover corner for you. I think he may jump some guys on the depth chart, some older guys that have been around for a while. Um, I think you get the starting line guys, you know, like Fry, um, of course, McPherson, those guys. And then I think the next line is, I think you're going to start seeing some Alex Hogan, uh, you know, getting a lot of reps next year. So I, and I don't think anybody's really talking about him in terms of, you know, how good can this guy be? I think he could be a really good corner for, for Texas Tech. I think uh, moving up to the linebacker uh, position, here's a guy who you know made headlines for starting or being uh, on the depth chart as a starter going into the season last year, and Tyree Matthews as a true freshman, but didn't really play a lot. Um, so on one hand, there's a lot of excitement about him, but then on the other, you know, he didn't play. So I, I know the coaches like him. They like his uh, athleticism. I think he can play both Raider and you know, Mike, a uh, linebacker for you. So, you know, with the hit of losing Xavier Benson, you might see more uh, more Matthews than, than expected. I do like him. Uh, a defense alignment that uh, I was expecting to play a lot as a true freshman, but he got hurt, uh, so he couldn't, is Gilbert Ibenemy. I think Gilbert Ibenemy is a guy who, he's had injury problems, but at one point he was a four-star defensive lineman. Um, I think he was headed to, to Texas A&M. But uh, he's come. He, you know, he came back from the injury. Then he got hurt as a true freshman last year. I think in, in fall camp. So uh, if I bend him, he can stay healthy. You know, six three, six four, two hundred seventy five pounds. Uh, very athletic, very strong. He's going to help you on the defensive line next year. So that's a guy nobody's talking about. I like a lot. Um, a receiver that I think has been kind of lost in the shuffle. Another guy who's battled a lot of injuries, and he's a you don't talk about a grown man. The guy's like I think he's like thirty at this point. Is Seth Collins. He has a sixth, either sixth or seven year uh, season of eligibility next year, but a lot of speed, some size. Like I said, you know, he's older, <laughs> he's a veteran, so you know, he can play inside, he can play outside. I think mean, he's a guy, if he stays healthy, can make a lot of plays for the Red Raiders next year. So, those are some guys I think nobody's really talking about right now who could step up and make, make some big plays for Texas Tech next year. Quasimodo wants to know, does Jax leaving open up a scholarship? He's talking about Jax Welch, uh, the running back who left uh, basically forego to senior season to pursue a law degree at Texas Tech. 
Um, he just announced earlier this week. Yeah, it does open up a scholarship on the roster. Now, you get 25 initial counters a year, and that's what it is. Now, there's some finagling that you can do. You can move some guys back. You can move some guys forward. But you, what you get is 25, 25 initial counters. So it does open up a scholarship on the roster, but, and I don't know exactly how they're counting everything, but I believe they have one – This like they have a scholarship now on the roster for their 85 limit, and I think they have one more initial counter left, uh, which we've talked about on the board – you can go to my July hot takes on the insider on Inside the Red Raiders. We already have a defensive uh, end, a former four-star guy who Texas Tech is looking to, to bring in. So the next question comes from Texan44 who asks, he says, do we see the Yost effect on tight end production this year? He mentions uh, there's only one somewhat proven tight end on the roster right now in Travis Kuntz. Uh, he says then Tech gets very young and inexperienced. Well, I kind of agree with you there. There is another proven fullback tight end type option in Connor Killian, a senior. Uh, he's played a lot of games, so he'll at least get it done for you as a run blocker. Now, that's not what they want and how they envision tight ends, uh, you know, for Coach Yost, Coach David Yost, the offensive coordinator. I, you know, and uh, you've heard actually Wells say they want to play maybe two three tight ends at a time go you know 13 personnel so just like 11 a lot like some other programs in the big 12 do uh and really go power and kind of power running game uh but also be able to to take some advantages in the passing game by moving out bigger uh targets who are still fast you know in terms of tight ends and that's you know look that is what travis Kuntz is he's a he's a former four-star guy big dude he could run um he did play he was the backup uh, last year, and uh, he played well when given an opportunity. So I like him, like you mentioned. You got Connor Killian. You have Simon Gonzalez, who, look, he was suspended during the spring. He's expected to be back. Um, you know, he, while he did not practice, he was still on the team, and Coach Wills told me he does expect, he has a, every opportunity to come back to the team. So he's another, you know, three star guy, big dude who could run. He, now he, he isn't experienced, you're right. Uh, he he does not have the experience you'd like to, to see, but he's a talent. You like him. And then they brought in, kind of, I think, to help out with that experience, Jason Lloyd, a junior college player. You know, he, he's not a, like, three-star recruit, but he he can run. He's got some size to him. Uh, I've interviewed him a couple times. I really like him. He's got a good head on his shoulders, and I expect him, you know, to play there Uh to play some next year to figure in on the depth chart. Uh, and then they brought in the freshman John Holcomb out of Wellington. Now, you talk about being able to run. I mean, I, the guy was went to state and track. I know it was in small Wellington. I think it was like 2A, but still, uh, you know, 6'4", 215, 220 already, and he can run. So, you know, I think you'd like to see him redshirt and develop, but they do have some options at tight end. And then they got some more help coming, uh, which we're going to talk about here later in the mailbag, but they got help coming the following year as well. So, you know, I think – I think in maybe two years is when we'll actually see Yost have the type of athletes and the guys developed to to really fulfill what he wants in terms of the use of tight ends. But like I said, we're going to get more into that later in the mailbag. So moving on. Texan asked, he says, uh, he just mentions the new transfer and JUCO recruiting philosophy. He says, others have been exploiting it for years. Uh, he says, are we misinterpreting it as a necessary evil or should we be, uh, or should it be embraced and we'd be criticized if we only, if we rely only on high school recruits? Well, I think that's a really good question. You know, since the advent of the transfer portal, it has opened things up more. And I think, um, yeah, the transfer game has always been a big part of college football, but never how it is now. Uh, I think quality transfers are are moving around and finding better fits and making a difference on different Power Five teams around the country. And I think we've seen it at Texas Tech. Uh, you know, Zach McPherson's a perfect example. Now, I'd hate to think about what this where this roster would be and what the secondary would be like without Zach on, on it next year. So, in t at times, it's a necessary evil, and I think it is for everybody. I mean, you see Alabama take a grad transfer or two almost every cycle. So, I think it. I don't know if you want. Five to seven grad transfers every year, but I think two to three is healthy. Um, and I, obviously, what Texas Tech has done in the grad transfer transfer market has 
it's elevated the talent level on the roster. Just it has. You know, Kingsbury was definitely uh, getting after it, but I think Wells has shown and his staff uh, they've been able to recruit even a higher level uh, of guys. I mean, look at just this year. Brandon Randall coming from Michigan State he was a former Army All American. Okay, I think he's going to start at Raider for you, especially with Xavier Benson taking a leave of absence. Uh, Eric Monroe was going to start for you at safety, former four star from LSU, guy who can run, center fielder type. Chadarius Townsend is going to be in your two or three deep. Uh, a lot of speed, former four star running back coming from Alabama. Josh Berger, now he's coming from Walford, but this guy was an All American wrestler in high school, All State performer, and on their gridiron in high school. Uh, two-year starter, three-year player at Wolford. Uh, he, I think he's going to start a right tackle for you. I mean, you have upgraded your roster through the, the transfer portal, and I think it would be foolish to abandon that, to go away from that. I think you should always have at least a you know a uh, initial counter one to three, I would say, at least every year. Have it open for transfers in case some kind of wild attrition happens, which it happens, you know, so that you can find a guy who can, you can plug in there uh, and, and get and still get it done next, the, the following season. But, I, you know, I've also talked with some people at Texas Tech, and I think there's differing views within the program, but I've heard guys say, hey, we want to take 25 high school guys next year, you know, and I understand that. I think when your roster gets healthy, when you get to a healthy point, you really want the bulk of your incoming talent, your incoming recruits, to be from the high school ranks just because uh, they're your guys, guys you know that are fists in your system, guys that you develop uh, and have grown up in your system. So, you know, I, there's an argument to be made either way. I think it just, it's whatever you need in a given cycle. And I think the transfer market is something that's, it's not going anywhere. It's here to stay, and I think it's going to be an even bigger deal moving forward as college football goes along. All right, final question comes from uh, Murdell Coalition, who wants to know, he says, JJ, you mentioned in your weekend uh, wanderings that you thought Thorpe, or Tharp and Castles would be beast studs. We're talking about tied in Mason Tharp and uh, tied in Jed Castles, two tight end commits. He says, do we see them potentially being on par with the beast stud tight ends that Iowa State put on the field against Tech last year. He said those guys just look like men amongst boys when, when Tech played them, and they simply had their way with us. He said he would love to see uh, Tech recruiting folks like that. That's exactly what this program is going for. Matter of fact, Coach Wells said that in his post-game pref, uh, press conference after Tech lost to Iowa State that their tight ends really got after him, and that at some point they would like to see, uh, they would like to do something like Iowa State did in terms of not just running 11 personnel, all the time, but running 12 personnel, 13 personnel, where you have these, like a Jed Castles or a Mason Tharp, 6'7", 6'8", 240-pound guys who could run and are real athletes. You know, Jed Castles was a wideout uh, at, at Wichita Falls Rider last year, and he was good. Um, he was the kind of guy they threw a lot of uh, back shoulder fades to, uh, some posts, He's really, he was really good at using his body, but he ran past folks. I'm talking about uh, Texas high school football, Class 5A DBs, you know, some deep Division I defensive backs. So, and Mason Thorpe is rated even higher than Jed Castle. So the, these are the kind of guys. They're going to keep stacking the Tharps and the Castles to where they can do what they want to do, and that's uh, take advantage of defenses and really uh, – dictate what they're going to do, whether they're going to run the ball out of a power formation or take advantage of smaller DBs with tight ends out on the perimeter. They want to be able to do that. They're going to do that by moving uh, versatile tight, big B stud versatile tight ends around the formation. And I love it. I think it's going to work once they get their guys. So in definitely Castle, Jed Castles and Mason Tharp are their kind of guys. So I think you hit the nail on the head. That's exactly what they're going for. And I, I just hope they get enough time to really put it into action and we can really see them kick butt with it because I think they will if they get enough time. But hey, with that, I want to say thank you for all the great questions. Thank you for watching. And until next time.